Y'all, we are here with truly one of my favorite new-ish metal bands. Y'all have been around for a couple of years now. We got Vended here. We got Jeremiah, Simon, and Cole in the house. Just wrapped up their show in Durham, North Carolina here. I got to tell you, first of all, thank y'all for doing this again. Of course. Because they've already been guests on the Rock Feed podcast, but my SD card died and I felt horrible and terribly embarrassing. They're doing this again. First of all, tell me how y'all met, how the band formed for those who don't know, and how it all started out there in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, me and Griff went to middle school together and I would always see him running through the hallways, you know, fucking singing at the top of his lungs and I had no clue who he was. And I played guitar, right. so I was like, let's start a band, you know? And uh, I was like, that's my guy. So he'd be singing in the hallways and whatever, and I was like, all right, I need him. So we played the talent show in eighth grade, played Smells Like Teen Spirit, and then we got to high school, and we're like, all right, let's really get serious. Oh, yeah? And he's like, I know a guy, Simon. So we come over, we jam, whatever, play a couple songs, and it's just like instantly we're connected, we're, we're jamming. And then a couple months later, we get JJ through connections and social media and stuff. And um, a couple of years later, we get Grodd, or about, about like a year later, yeah. pretty pretty close. And then uh, we just jammed and wrote and played in the basement for like three years before we ever played our first show. We just hang out, play music, hang out, drive around, go fish, go whatever during the summer and everything. Y'all fishermen? Fishing, My doing boys. whatever, man. Just hanging Let's out. Go. And so it started when we were 14. And now we're 20, 21, 19, you know. So about six years into this and we're just starting to get rolling. So Right. Uh, what's it like growing up out there in Iowa, out there in those cornfields? What's a lifestyle like being in Iowa? <laughs> well, let's see here. Um, <laughs> it's kind of... I think personally it's kind of cool because it's like, it's so small, you know, it's like everybody knows each other there. You yeah. can go to a gas station and be like, Hey, what's up, Bob? You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird. It's just, everyone knows each other from someplace, high school, work, any, and it's like, obviously like since we live there, since we were born, we just, we got bored. We were just getting bored of it. But when new people come in, I'm always like, yo, you'll enjoy this. You'll enjoy that. But I feel like it's a good place for music, like for us, cause it just, the winters there are so fucking cold and it's like it brings the best out of you because you're like oh, i'm so freezing i don't want to practice and then you just have the most insane set so it's like yeah i was pretty sweet and growing up there is pretty cool too y'all really go 110 percent live i'm not just saying that look them up on youtube you watch these guys uh i'm like man y'all y'all uh jeremiah sat down he left a butt print from sweat on the <laughs> You know, it's like y'all really do, y'all really are about this. You know, how did you develop that live performance and, and that cohesiveness as a band? Um, Like we said earlier, or Cole said earlier, it was just like three years of practice in the basement. And then after that, you know, it's the 100 show rule. Like after 100 shows, everything seems to kind of just like line up and you kind of just become who you are on right. stage and everything. Am I the only one came out? You've been evolving your sound slowly, you know? What can fans expect from you musically going forward? What are the plans? You just wrapped up this huge tour with Bullet. So I want to walk back really quick and, and just talk about, because I love Bullet for my Valentine. How has that tour been uh, with those fellas that I love very much? The guys are great. The crew is great. It was like 3,000 plus people every huge night shows. going fucking wild. And, you know, they brought us in. They treated us like family which not a lot of bands do. So, some bands do, but they really treated us like family and made us feel at home. And uh, it was great. Every night was fucking wild. And yeah, it was crazy. That's so cool. I, yeah, they. So those are crazy people. <laughs> They're crazy. Yo, shout out Padge. We love you. We love you so much, Padge. Let's love go. You. Padge is the man. Um, yeah, I mean, that tour was so cool because I know y'all probably picked up a ton of fans from that. It helped People out a lot. Seen y'all, it's impossible to walk away not going, man, they are going for it a thousand percent. Uh, you know, Griff is a great front man, uh, really, really, you know, shades of Corey Taylor 2.0, you know, in some ways, a lot of, uh, just natural, uh, comparison there. And he's the seed. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. Um, Simon, I want to ask you, like, how you got into drumming and, like, you are a beast on the kit, sincerely. And I was watching you tonight. I'm like, this dude is just 
beast mode out here. Tell me about your journey in drumming. Well, as far as I can look back, I don't really know much, but there is a picture or a Polaroid picture of me on a tour bus uh, with a snare, like a cartoon snare drum or whatever. And I guess that was like my first, like every time picking up drumsticks. And I was like, not even one yet. So <laughs> I've been playing drums since I was one years old and it feels already like a lifetime because it is right. it literally just from day one already just been pounding the skins. So <laughs> well, it shows because I mean, you're, you're, you're very talented. What are the plans in 2024 that you can share? Um, well, we got one new song out. Yep. <laughs> um, the fans have been digging it. You know, we've been playing it live for about eight months now. Yep. You know, we played it before it came out and they dug it. And then we released it about, you know, a month and a half ago and stuff with the video and everything. And that song was done raw in the studio with no click and no samples. I love you know, that. Straight up, we all were in the room and we fucking press play, recorded it. And, and we did... 20 takes just over and over and over no click in the room and you know the energy came out that way and um that's just how we roll so anything coming forward that's kind of the energy we're bringing is raw in the room we want you to feel like you're listening to us here on the stage in the headphones so Dude, bring that energy that. so that's kind of where we were coming from with that and as of coming forward with new stuff and in the future i, I don't know i mean Y'all want to elaborate? I, I know what's coming. Uh, a nice big nap. Is... Yes. Well deserved. <laughs> I, I feel like it hasn't ended yet. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just going back to the like the single and everything. It just, we came out with no music at first, you know, and everyone just got to see what we do live. And that's just what we want to do is if you remember seeing us at our first show, our second show, our third, like so forth, we want to, we want you to imagine it. You know, just exactly how you see us on stage is exactly what you're going to listen to. So it's just pure energy and just rawness. The thing about Vended that I think is so cool is is watching you all from the first show in Iowa. I remember that. I didn't get to go, but I remember like what a big deal that was. There's genuinely a lot of hype behind that. Um, you know, what was that experience like really starting your career, where you're from, um, and and what were the nerves going into that show? Were you nervous? What were the feelings? It was it was a crazy time, but you know, like after the show, it was just like this is our calling, you know, like this is what we've always wanted to do. It's what we dreamt of. Uh, I don't remember much from that show. Like my adrenaline was just like through the roof. All I remember is just like the red lights, and honestly, the monitors actually looked like this. That's kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's I don't I don't remember a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wood. I remember this. I remember driving in my vehicle with, I think, Cole and Griff or something. I don't remember who was fully there, but I just remember us. We went we went to a show, and we drove back, and we're going back to our practice you space. Hit the curb. I hit a curb. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, this is not, this is before the show. I, mean, I randomly, I just go, man, that show was awesome. We should book a show. And it happened. I emailed the promoter that night. And I was just like, hey, we want to play a show. And they were like, okay. And then out of nowhere, we were just like, oh, fuck. It has started. <laughs> like, that's how it felt. Like, it was just random and cool. And it was just like one of those moments. It was spontaneous. It was just a random thought. Like, if I never did that or, like, if we never decided that, we who knows when we would have played a show. Like, it just was super random. Totally. And the crazy thing about that first show is it was, I believe, on March 8th of 2020. So, uh it was literally within a couple of days uh, from when everything went to shit. So it was like our, we barely <laughs> slipped in. We barely slipped in before everything was done. You know, we played the show and we went home, whatever. And it was like, oh, pull the plug. Everything's done. So that, that gave us another fucking year to just practice. practice, practice, practice. And we played a show so we know what to expect and stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. Now y'all have toured so much, and I and I truly mean this. Uh, every day, every I, day. I go to shows day. around the country, pretty much everywhere I go, Vended is there. How many times have I seen y'all this year in various places throughout the U.S.? Freaking New York, man. We've got, <laughs> I swear, like our management, one of the you know, like main guys there, every time he comes to the New York show, he's always like, I swear, I see you guys every other month here. Yeah. And this is the only band that I know that comes here this much. That I'm is just true, like, y'all. 
I'm like, oh man, I forgot I was here like uh, two months ago. <laughs> y'all, how how much you know how how many months have y'all been on the road this year? Because y'all really are out here doing it. I can't do the math right now. Five months out of eleven months. Of Bands don't really tour like that anymore. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, we've been out here for like five, six months, yeah. whatever. And that's honestly a little less than before, in all honesty. Yeah. So y'all are at probably five shows or so, four shows maybe from finishing out the year. Very strong. It's been a huge year for y'all, obviously. Uh, what are the plans when you get home? Because I know y'all are tired and I'm so thankful for y'all doing this. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm going to pet my dog. That's it. Just gonna anybody chill out. The new cod, anybody? Uh, what do y'all do in your free time? God, I'm playing the new freaking cod. It's bro. sick, dude. I'm excited. It's so sick. I'm, I'm just doing the same thing as him. Or <laughs> go to bed, take a shower, and play some games. You know? Hell yeah! Eat some very good food. <laughs> yes. Are we Xbox or PlayStation or PC? Xbox and PC. PlayStation, baby. Oh, what? I'm an Xbox. Guy. PlayStation. I'm Xbox all day. They're noobs. They're noobs. Yes. So is it just is it just Call of Duty? What else are we playing? Minecraft. I fuck with it. Hell yeah, Minecraft, bro. <laughs> Minecraft. Minecraft. And Red Dead Redemption too. The bro. fucking cowboy game. Bro. I be farming. I be fishing. I be shooting. <laughs> you fucking I'm know it. Flipping that. Oh yeah. Farming. I be fishing. I. It's COD for me. I haven't played COD recently because they've been shutting down a lot of crap on it, and it's just kind of. It's been toxic, but I've been playing that new uh, Texas Chainsaw game. That's sick. The, yep, the game is that. so good, and it it makes my heart pump. So, what's the other game like that? That um, De Dead it's by Daylight. A few years. Dead by Daylight's way. Yeah. Shit. I used to be insanely like into that game, and then it got to a point where everyone has been just the biggest wuss of all time. And if anyone here plays Dead by Daylight, I'm talking to you because <laughs> seriously, the whole community in that franchise. They're the biggest pussies of all time. I'm yes. sorry, but it's true. They, they complain about everything, and then it makes it into a whole other thing. And they're like, eh, this game sucks. I'm like, well, it's because you turned it into that way. So, I've been freaking out about the announcement from Rockstar Games this week that the new Grand Theft Auto Hell yeah. is coming in December. I hope y'all are not on tour when that you comes wanna out. Know, you want to know a fucking fact? Let's go. I was in fifth grade when GTA came out. Isn't that insane? <laughs> I was 10. GTA 5? I, I was 10. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Dude. I was too young to even play that game. That is insane. Now I'm going to go buy it in the store, and they're not going to ask if I'm 18 or anything. That's right. You have to lie. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, bro. That, that game's going to be crazy. I got to say this. I was thinking about this the other day. What would it mean for a band to have their music in GTA 6? That's dude, insane. we we were talking about this stuff the other day of like having our music in like a commercial or some shit. As I mean, like I played so many games growing up, and that's how I like discovered music. Not even just like from Guitar Hero yep. or a rock band. Um, Madden. Just yeah, just like Madden, a bunch Tony of Hawk. racing games. Yeah, Tony Hawk especially sure. and everything, or like all the skate games too. It's only gotten bigger. Like gaming at that time was huge, but now it's like 10x the entire music industry. It's massive, and and to have you know. Even Call of Duty, they have Slaughter to Prevail in the campaign. Uh, they have the last Call of Duty. You had Zoltan from Five Finger Death Punch is an in-game character, which is crazy. Like, I know him. He's a great guy. Do, do you remember Avenged being in Black Ops? Yeah, I did. Yeah, Avenged Sevenfold. It was awesome. That, and he was like, you know, because how I even learned about Avenged Sevenfold was Madden. Bro. Hell yeah. That's how I learned, that's how I learned Avenged Sevenfold was Black Ops 2. Let's like go. they like when they released like uh that original the, song the famous like origins map for zombies and it was shepherd of fire yeah and i was like oh what the hell is that <laughs> and i was like oh this is cool and then i played the campaign finished it and they had this random track they made and they're playing and i'm just like bro this is fucking sick yep <laughs> who are some of the coolest bands y'all have gotten to meet and and perform with i know one of the things about y'all that I was so jealous about is when that pantera we saw the south first, america dude we saw the first pantera show back and we saw him like six more times in, in South America. That's so sick. We saw him in, in like a soccer stadium in Chile. And they had pyro that was fucking blasting. And wind was blowing it back into everyone's gear. And they're just like, blow the pyro. <laughs> and they're just ripping like walk and in, in, in all the classics. And 
you see in that was really cool in South right. America, the comeback. And it's it's a tribute, you yeah. know. Everyone has their thing about it. But, but objectively, they're killing it. It was cool that. to see. Yeah, it's really cool to see. Yeah. Who's another band that we fuck with? Gojira. Hell yeah. We we finally played with Gojira the first time, like, in Poland, I believe. And it was the first time we got to play. No. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> first time we got to play under them, same technically, stage. same stage. And that was, like, a dream come true for me. And, like, my dream is to tour with them in general. So it's, like, also, they're just really good homies with us. And they're really nice and respectful. And to be, like pretty sure like first on that stage with them in that festival it was just unreal so a lot cool. of musicians really love gojira i hear that a lot lamb of fucking god bro. let's go dude Virginia. lamb of god lamb of god is fucking amazing we gotta do a couple shows out there in europe with them man i'm trying to think of who else i mean pantera is like number one yeah oh bring me the horizon we wow. we opened one show with them out there in brazil it was crazy was it brazil right yeah, yeah it was brazil it was like a last minute like thing and they yeah, it was literally like a day notice. And we were like, fuck yeah, we're going to fucking play. Yeah, we're direct support. It was ridiculous. They just had an issue in like uh, Indonesia where the fans got wild and they're like, I guess their stage wasn't safe and they had to uh, postpone their show. Yeah, the trust. And it's like, oh, I, oh I damn. The right call. Uh, have y'all ever had situations in your shows where the crowds are so crazy? You're like, oh, we got to calm shit down. Well, it seems like y'all would have that. Tonight, um, since uh, Jesus Christ, it was crazy. <laughs> um, so we, we usually, uh, so for some of our headlines, we don't play an encore cause we, <laughs> yeah, tell us a blunt we, because y'all were saying that. And I think that's, I agree with it. I think it's interesting. The philosophy encores aren't guaranteed. Yeah, no, like, like you said, encores aren't guaranteed, but our thought process behind it is just, we just want to leave people wanting more, you know, and they're going to want to come back. They're going to want to see it. And so much so it kind of backfired and we went into the green room and we leave all of our instruments out ringing and people were like trying to break into the door they're like pounding Actually, on it. It, it was something straight from like nazi zombies or some shit it was scary <laughs> the rule i believe with encores if it's not on the set list don't play it and that's just how it is if you don't, if you haven't rehearsed it and if you haven't planned to do it then don't do it you know i'm with it 100 percent. we're gonna play what we're gonna play and that's that's all you get you know, we're rocking out, and then we're gone. Right. Elvis has left the building. That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The, the you know, and, and even for y'all, the amount of energy that you put into these shows, it's like, I don't even know how you do this night after night, and and seeing, you know, how much y'all are on the road. Really, it's like, it's almost athletic what y'all do, because uh, just tonight. Hydration, stretching, eating, food is important, sleeping as much as you can kind of get. How much sleep do y'all get on average per night? Four, three. Four hours for real? Three, four, five, yeah. We drive like three or four hours. It's not glamorous, show. is it? People think people no. think y'all are private jetting in between. We trips. don't have a bus. We've never had a bus. That's right. We're in a Sprinter van, trailer. We drive ourselves everywhere. Yep. I mean, we're not complaining. We're right. rocking, but but we're, we're earning it, you know? Right. People think we're just on a five-star bus and... No. Y'all are truly grinding. I have seen that firsthand. I've seen y'all like five or six times now. And it's like y'all are really grinding and, and developing like a grassroots fan base. We pack our trailer ourselves and we pack our gear ourselves. So, And I literally saw that too right before we started filming. Yeah, this is it. It's just, you know, we take care of our own shit and that's just how it's been. And it's just a big, you know, middle finger to everyone who's like, oh, they probably like, no, we drove two days to Blue Ridge just to play and then it get canceled. So... <laughs> two days back so yeah i don't know what you want me to say how do you deal with being away from home as much as you you do and you know i don't know i just how do you deal with that grind of touring because it seems really tough i mean like seeing like uh, it's a weird way of play, seeing results right. or whatever you know like more people showing up more people you know singing the songs like there's a bigger pit maybe this night more people jumped at this part oh, yeah. asking the jump or like even like a big breakthrough on this tour we started having people like put up their like lighters or like flashlights and shit because we've seen you know so many bands do it and it was just it was awesome you know when the the lights come down and the whole room's lit up but it's it's them doing it it's not you know stage lights and everything but uh you know like missing home and stuff you know we just it it really helps you know like seeing results and good things you know but you, you just kind of have to do it and put your head down and do it because you know if this is what you if, if this is what you want to do this is, this is what you got to do you know i love that so much 
even if I go somewhere for a week, I'm like, fuck, I'm trying to go home. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, the harder you go, you know, maybe next time you'll get a, a better sprinter van yeah. with, with more seats or, you know, even this tour, we just did our first tour with a sound guy. Right. Even at that, like, every day is so much easier, you know. Y'all sounded really good tonight, too. Hell yeah. I Sh mean, Shout out to Rob. He's amazing. Shout out Rob. He made y'all sound great, but y'all already sound great. You know, I'm always curious how people specifically order their set list. Sometimes I look at people's set lists and there's like codes on them and shit, like red, green, blue, purple. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Um, ours is pretty straightforward. I mean, we have our, our couple songs we, or our song we usually open up with. You know, our catalog isn't, ex isn't very extensive right now. Right. You know, we have an EP, we have some singles. Right. Um, so we got to play as much as we can. Um, we have our songs that we open up with classically. And then it's kind of just like what goes into each other best. You know, some songs are paired. Some songs, you know, have a break in between. And it, each tour, it changes. Um, we just kind of get together and like, what do we want to do this tour? And how do we want it to flow? And, you know, what are we finishing with? What are we starting with? How is it going to blend? You know, it, it changes every tour, but we kind of have a grasp of like what the fans like, what flows good. And what was the moment for y'all where y'all were like, oh shit, we can really do something with this. This is really starting to take off. Is there anything that stands out? I walked on stage in an arena with negative $1.29 in my account. That's when I knew I made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That, it, was, it, was, it was a crazy time, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's like a couple other times where like I knew we made it or some shit, but honestly, I'm still not satisfied. I want more, you know. Oh, that's a great mindset. Exactly. I'm with that. I I know we made it when I saw Poland, the entire stadium jumping at once yeah. when we asked them to. Same that's got to be insane. And it's just like one of those things, like you know, on another continent. Yeah. <laughs> to have people they resonate with what you do, <laughs> that's nuts. It was cool though, but yeah. It's it's just such a weird experience. It, it's weird, you know, like going from like opening up in arenas and then coming to club shows and being so intimate with the crowd and then just it's such a variety that we go through. It's like, oh, we'll do clubs and there'll be like 30 people. And then all yep. of a sudden we're with Bullet and for my Valentine, there's 3000 people. And there's it's just, just like huge. It's either we have space on stage or we don't have space on stage and it's still we kick ass. So. Yep. I wonder, I, most people say no, I don't know. Do y'all ever get nervous before you perform? I would. Uh, me personally, not really. I mean, you're not going to die. after. Was that know, ever like, a thing for you, though? Were you ever, like, when you first started, were you like, oh, um, this is nerve-wracking? Everyone's different. I personally never got super nervous, but I think it, it really is because we uh, played for, like, three years before. So I was really comfortable with how we were and stuff. Um, but everyone's different, and it's good to get nervous. It's good to be a little jittery, you know, so, um, you know, I mean, he's like, you're excited. I'm always excited, but yeah, I don't really get very nervous anymore. First show, I was shitting my pants. Yeah. Because it was just one of those things, like, no one knew what we sounded like or what we looked like, you know, it was just like, they just saw our Instagrams and I was just shitting my pants because it's like, oh, we go on stage in five minutes. I hope no one walks out. You know what I mean? It was just scary and it was sold out and I was just like, here we go. Uh, here we go. But no, I don't get nervous anymore. It's just kind of like a walk in the park now. Right. But you still got to play 110%, like you said. And so it's even though it's easy for us to play these songs, it's still a, a war. <laughs> Usually, like, uh, I don't get nervous anymore, but I more get anxiety in the sense that, like, I just want to play. Right. You know, like, our intro gets longer and longer every single fucking night we play, you know, because I just, I just want to get on the stage and fucking play, you know there's so much off time while you're on the road. Like uh, people will say, Oh, it's 23 hours and it's just one hour a day. And you go through so much bullshit to get on stage. I mean, is that a factor for y'all? Sometimes it's not even one hour, you know, for some of our situations, it's, you know, we get 25 minutes of God or whatever, you know, you, you get the term is, or the saying is like, you get paid for the 23 hours it takes to get there. Yeah. Not the one hour you're on stage. That's true. I, I believe that. In all the hundreds of hours when you're not even on tour, too. So with bands, you know, one of the things I think is I feel like not enough people start bands anymore. If you're listening, I hope you start a band and get good and practice. And Do it. Hard. We need we need more people out here. What advice would y'all give to people who really take it seriously, you know, like y'all do? What advice would y'all give to people who are who are interested in starting a band? What should they be looking for? What should they be focused on to do that? You know... 
just find people <clears throat> you know you like around you don't take shit play the music you want to fucking play yep that's all i can say practice seriously it'll pay off <laughs> It, like like we said, we practiced for three years before we stepped foot on a stage, and people loved it. And because we were tight, you know, we practiced loading up my basement stairs and taking our gear down and like cleaning it, and then like putting our gear back down the stairs and setting it back up in like oh, rec meticulous. like record time. You know, we were just we were like like who knows? We might have ten seconds to get our shit off. Let's go. You know, it was just like I love so that practice. You know. Everything's in the details too, along with practice. Like, like he said, we practice setting up and taking down and writing imaginary set lists and playing imaginary shows. You know, like everything matters, even if you don't think it does, it does matter. Right. You know, like show up on time, that matters. Uh, writing your set list, practicing your set list, practicing loading gear, you know, all that stuff, the little stuff matters as well. But uh, just find friends you like and, and you know, just start jamming. Can y'all give me each, give me three bands that had a huge impact on you growing up? Who are the three bands that you listened to and you're like, oh, fuck, this was, these bands were big for me. Doesn't have to be three. I just came up with that. Um, be one. Off the top of my head, Nirvana, Pantera, and I'm going to say Motley Crue. Hell yeah. Fuck. I don't know. Because I've heard so much music. Right. No. Um, I, Deftones was really pretty broad. And like, yeah, dude. Deftones <laughs> was what? Oh, yeah. It's hard to limit to three. Deftones was like beginning of my childhood. And then uh, I slowly started getting into Middle Class Threat, which is like a an, an underrated band, in my opinion. And they're underground. What are they called? Middle Class Threat. They're like, it's just a two piece. It's just a drummer, guitar player, and they both sing. It's just cool, you know, hard rock alternative. Love it. Um, then Gojira later in my life, I guess. I don't know. It's a solid this is the best I can think of. There was a lot put into my ears when I was growing up, so it's hard right. to pick. You know, there's so I many. Imagine, yeah, totally. Uh, for me, uh, when I was really young, my dad got me listening to Beatles. So, like, I was like five years <laughs> old watching the Yellow Submarine. Beatles was it. Uh, but two other bands that kind of shaped my guitar playing and just shaped music in general for me was Guns N' Roses slash and Pantera and Dimebag. Love it. You know, so that's my three. Beatles, Pantera, Guns N' Roses. And, and just for the people, give me uh, each one of your favorite movies of all time. I think people would love to hear this. I just like to ask different type of questions. Uh, Step Brothers all the fucking way. Let's go, bro. My mom and I know that movie by like every line <laughs> and we recite it and people can't watch it with us because we're annoying. We like know every word. You're play the drum scene. Exactly. It's just, that's, that movie was a whole family thing. Like we'd all Love get that. together and like have a movie night and we'd watch that. And that's, that's, that's I think that's why it's one of my favorite movies because it just required family. That's so cool. That's a classic. Nacho Libre. Let's go, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. That movie is so funny. I can recite every single fucking line. Nacho, I need to switch. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. I don't believe in science. <laughs> Wait, no, he's like, I only believe in science. Have y'all met Jack Black through like Tenacious D or anything? Yet? No, we we have some friends that that have met him. You don't have him for real. We'd fucking love to meet Jack him. Black. This will be quick, and then Cole will give his movie. But I, I oh, I almost met him. I was this close. He was. We were at Rock and Park, fucking wherever that is, and he was standing like this far away from me, and I was just staring at him like this. <laughs> I was like, oh, you here, you here, you are. Why are you here? And I was like, oh, it's Tenacious D is playing. I, oh, we were in Germany. We were in Germany. And he was just there. And he was talking to all these people. And I was just like, you know, I'm not going to say hi. I just don't want to do that, you know? Love it. I don't have a favorite movie. You There's really, you don't want any movies like that? Uh, you watch show? Do you, do you have okay. a favorite trashy reality show? I really, I really like Breaking Bad. Love it. As a TV show. That's a good show. Um, but have you ever seen Hot Rod? I've seen it. Um, that's uh, Gold Rush. Gold Rush. Gold Rush. Every fucking machine is. One of the always, guys from Gold Rush follows. Everything's Rock breaking messages. all the time. They're always having a freak yeah. out. Everything's going wrong in Gold Rush. They never What's get your it favorite right. trashy reality show. Would you say trashy? You have one for me. It's like Jersey Shore. I like. I, like I never that got into that. I mean, I don't have a trashy reality, but my favorite TV show is uh, American Horror Story. That's a good show. I was, That's a great. Show. I was I I watched that religiously. I was like show. I I still watch the first season because it's the best. So I love that. 
Were y'all, um, sorry, go ahead. Does this count as a trashy reality reality TV show, Big Brother? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I so I, think I guess so. Fair. I don't know. I used to watch that when I was like, that's a good show. So. Is that I don't still know if it's trashy either because that's a hard show. I love Survivor. What happened to that one guy on Survivor that like started flexing his muscles and then he passed out? You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. You know He's what? Like, I, I, I want to bring back. I want to bring back the show Rock of Love. What is that? <laughs> you gotta look into it. It's hosted by Brett Michaels from Poison. And Yo, to, okay, why, let's dude, go. You gotta watch it, dude. It is so. It's it's peak did, reality. Did, didn't like Steve O do that too? See, I don't know. I don't know if he did, but I know Steve O. You know, obviously Wild Boys, Jackass. That was like my shit, Jackass. Oh yeah, Jackass. Viva La Bam. All right, so uh, just to wrap things up here because I appreciate y'all's time and I know you're fucking tired as hell because y'all work so hard. Oh, we're chilling. <laughs> but I've been. Each one of you, I'm curious. Like, how would you describe Vendette Sound to someone who is watching this that has never heard Vendette? Raw, aggressive, in your face. Yeah. Hell yeah. I agree. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, go equals power. Love it. Fucking Hell yeah. Uh, uh, raw, pure energy. Uh, balls to the wall. The main thing I want to get across to anyone who's watched this, you know these guys, you can tell they're cool guys, but you got to go to a show to really understand it. And uh, you will see the energy. You'll see how hard they go. All that internet chatter goes away when you see Vendead live. Yeah. At the end yeah. of the day, that's the bottom line. When Just you come go see, see Vendead live, it's undeniable. We welcome all the haters. Just yes. come to a show. You got to come to a show. You, show. Really you can hard. still hate us after the show. Just come see it. Yeah. You got to see You it. can say fuck you to my face and I'll still like rock out this whole place just for you. Yeah. Just the truth. Run. <laughs> yeah i i don't really care what people say i like playing that's the music the i just like playing the music that i want to play and if you fucking hate it then you know who gives a shit that's how you have to be with anything with like youtube as well like you just have to go i do this shit because i like to do this it doesn't matter you know uh, we're just gonna try to make it to the top and we're gonna pull every ankle and every fucking limb or whatever from every motherfucker who's above us you know uh, one more question, actually, that I just thought of. What's your dream tour? If you guys could go out on tour with any one band, whether they take you out on tour, or you go out on tour with them, whatever it is, if there's one band you'd really love to tour with, who would it be? Even, like, Dead or Alive? Dead or Alive, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I would fucking cry if Nirvana took us, took us out. Go. Or Shout out to Chris Novoselic. Had him on the channel <sighs> earlier. Wow. Year. What what is he like? Dude, I flew. So I got in. This is a true story. I don't think I've ever said this, but I got an email I was at one of the festivals. I have my phone. It says email from Chris Novoselic. It was like, hey, got a new band. Can it come on Rock Feed? I like your channel, whatever. And I'm like, this shit is fake. Someone's trying to, <laughs> I get all kinds of crazy emails. I'm like, this is fake. I respond. I'm like, as a joke, I'm like, you know, when can I come to Seattle? And he's like, yeah, we'll set it up. And then like, he hits me back and is like, this museum would be perfect. And then like their people are on the email and I'm like, oh, this is real. Oh God. And damn. so I go out there, I meet him. That dude is so humble and genuine. One of the funniest things he said to me was like, you know, he's like, man, I'm in the t-shirt business now. And I was, when you think about what that means with Nirvana, like, I'm like, man, they must be selling a lot of shirts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're everywhere. They're in Target and whatever yeah. shit. But he anyways. A band called Third Secret, I, I genuinely strongly recommend with Kim Thale from Soundgarden. Oh, Matt yeah. Cameron from yeah, Bad yeah. Band. That they're band's great. Right band. So Nirvana's sick. And what about you? Well, also, uh, fuck, I don't know. I already said Gojira earlier, so I got to think of a new one. Uh, no. Um, I don't know. Any band would be cool. I think, like, I'll just say, like, one that's alive. I'd like to tour a Slaughter to prevail, even though, like, it's a kind of different. It'd still just be cool. Let's go. It'd just be one of those, like, those, uh, what is it called? You know when they, like, uh, they like put a band together when it's like a bunch of famous dudes from other bands and they put them together. It's like, super, super yeah, super group. It'd be like a super dog. We had like two other people to prevail. Let me add. Would break the internet. Add Bro, to that. dude, that's let that's me add to that tough. tour with Malevolence. Let's have you ever heard of Malevolence? I, I have. UK. Shit. And then we add Omerta on the beginning of that. And then it would be in fucking insane, Look bro. Look at 
Bro, that would be like a super tour, and it would be crazy because it would just be bands that just throw the fuck down every night, and they don't give a shit. That'd be crazy. I'm clipping this, and we're everybody Alex. In the comments. Make it happen. Alex, like a bunch of do it now. Zoom in tight on the face. I guess. We got it. We got to We got to do a modern uh, family values tour. That's oh what we want to do, bro. We were just talking about it. A modern family values tour. No one does that anymore. Nobody does that. And also, yep. uh, I just want everyone in the comments to truly appreciate how hard, I've said this 15 times, but how hard the chain link goes. Can we sh take a moment to respect like Real. old school Monday Night Raw backstage interview style? Like, falls that is, that is, that's, I get serious Ooh. new metal vibes from that. We built them ourselves. Thanks, guys. I appreciate yep. it. And I'm um, very tired to be doing this. Uh, yeah, we're chilling. Welcome to Vended. Uh, fuck you. Well, I'm going piss. <laughs> Make also uh, 